2020. Yes, they call him the beast. It all started when I had the big blonde hair. He's a monster of a man with a golden heart. I saw that sensitive side of him and that's what caught me. Uh, uh, beep, beep. We go behind closed doors with Manu Latuve. <laughs> He's faced a tsunami of criticism in the past. Oh, no! But it's a personal tragedy that opens the floodgates. Still tough. Well, this year hasn't been the best for Warriors fans, but Manu Vatuve remains the people's favourite. They call him the Beast, a huge man who strikes fear in the hearts of the opposition. But there's nothing scary about him off the field. Beth Roach takes you into the Beast's private lair and discovers a gentle giant with a golden smile. <laughs> He's one of the best rugby league wingers in the world. Admired by his fans. Adored by his family. Ready? Yeah, this is the man they call the beast. A beast who's humble to the core. What do you think makes you such a good player? I don't know if I'm, if I'm a good player. He's wrong, yeah. the awards don't lie, and he's got the trophies to prove it. But in the beginning, the Tongan and Tank nearly took up rugby. When I went to college, I, I was going to change codes to rugby because a few of my family are big rugby fans. And, but uh, Deputy Principal asked me if I wanted to play for his son. Manu was playing for several South Auckland teams, but it wasn't long before the scouts swooped when he was just 15. I remember going to my dad's work and telling him the news that I made into the development squad for the Warriors. So. What did Dad say? Oh, he was pretty, he was pretty happy. I think uh, there was a few tears coming down his eyes, but, you know. Here comes the Beast and he's come back again! Oh. When did they start calling you the Beast? I don't know, way. I think it all started when I had the big blonde hair and then I was one of those little chubby boys and just, I don't know, <laughs> they just started calling me the beast. <laughs> Come on. Uh, time. Uh. Sporting a fro to end all fros, the beast made his Warriors debut. He was 18, very shy, and suddenly faced with the media. Oh, I was pretty tough because... Um, I never used to see, like talking um, in front of a camera and stuff. I used to try and run away from it. Um, <laughs> when I knew I had one, I used to try and hide and try and hide in the team room or something. <laughs> and wait until they come and find me, and then I'll go indoors. So. And and through all this, he was still at school. In the first 15 rugby team, the volleyball team, the soccer team, and the basketball team. And there was a girl in the netball team who became Manu's fiercest critic, biggest fan and fiancé. He was really, really serious when it came to sports. But, um, yeah, I saw that sensitive side of him and I think that's what, you know, that, that's what caught me. But the big man was a bit slow off the mark. He'd fancied Jennifer since third form, but didn't ask her out until seventh form. It took you five years to ask her out. Yeah, yeah. She was kind of the, one of those popular girls. I wasn't, I wasn't that popular back at school. <laughs> <laughs> I just uh, kind of held back a bit and, you know, try and work my game plan and stuff. No, jokes. No, no. Team Vatuve soon became three. At 20 years old, the rising star of the Warriors became a father. A few things I had to sacrifice, and it was pretty hard, but I had to do it for my little girl, so, yeah. What did you have to sacrifice? Oh, like, you know, um, being, on the, being on the drinks and stuff and, you know, um, going out a lot and doing all those stuff, so I've kind of cut down on those and hardly have touched a um, touched the beer. Three-year-old Michaela is daddy's wee girl. What's this? What does Michaela say when she sees Manu on TV? She'll be like, oh, that's my daddy and my son tackles with dad. She's like, 
<laughs> Mommy, that man tickled my daddy and she throws like the meanest tantrum. <laughs> okay. Tonight, though, she has her daddy at home. It's one of the biggest nights on the league calendar. The Manu's team, Brisbane, is winning the state of origin. New South Wales fans are banished to the kitchen until they score. Today is game day and it's all business. Victoria Becker makes it look easy, but being a footballer's wife is no walk in the park. A win or a loss means just as much to Jen as it does to Manu. It's frustrating because um, you find that some some people take it out on you because he's your partner, but then they're like, they come up to you and you're like, oh, the Warriors lost, and you're like, what am I supposed to do about it? Today's got Smart off to a good start. There's certainly no denying the Warriors are entering that chapter. The a few minutes in, Manu scores. He's back in town, back in town. Hey, hey that's good. You've got to keep it up now. But Jen gets so nervous, she can't sit down for the second half. They keep it going. Barber will score the match winner. The Warriors get pipped at the post in the last few minutes, but there'll be no false praise from Jen. The couple have an agreement. After every game, Jen tells Manu exactly how he played. So you want her to tell you the truth? Sure, like, you know, um, like if you go to someone else and ask them, they'll always say you have a good game and stuff, but, you know, your partner's always the one that always straight up with you and, and tells tells you um, what's oh, like what I've done wrong and stuff. So... Every game I always asks her and she kind of tells me what I've done wrong and what I need to work on sometimes. And he takes it really well. I think I'm the one that takes it bad when he's... <laughs> you didn't do this in netball. I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm the one that takes it bad, but he's really good. Um, yeah. I think... It, and he takes it seriously just because it's from me. on the other foot when Jen plays netball, Manu takes it just as seriously. Like, what do you say when they lose and stuff? Oh, you don't want to do. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just mock her and stuff, but uh, I just tell her, and, uh, just tell her what she was doing wrong and like what she does good and stuff, so yeah. <laughs> It's an agreement that's got the family through some tough times. And there goes the ball. And that 2007 game against the Eels that the Beast would rather forget. Oh, no. A handful of dropped balls and a tsunami of criticism. Was that the first time you'd had any criticism like that? Oh, yeah, like hard out. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, everyone. Uh, you see, it was criticising me for dropping the ball and, you know, um, like, thought I'll never catch a ball again and stuff, so it was pretty hard. It was sad that, like, they kept on bringing it up, but you got to understand that, um, OK, the game's over now, get over it, you know? He, he, did, he made a mistake, he came back bigger and stronger. This is a and he got the last laugh. And Fanavai collects a double. Against the same team he'd played a year earlier, Manu scored three tries, nailing his first hat trick in his NRL career. This is out there, with a hat trick. Criticised me, and you know, I wanted to prove prove them wrong, and you know, I just got angry every time. And every time I go on the field, I just get angry and try and take it out on the team. So yeah. <laughs> came to last year's World Cup, he proved himself yet again. I never thought I'll, I'll, I'll make it because uh, last year was kind of... Um, had a few games that I got injured and was out for a while and kind of never thought I'll, I'll make the team and I kind of tried my best and was pretty lucky to make it and to win the World Cup was, was an extra bonus, so yeah. Did you have a big party afterwards? Yeah, it was there. <laughs> I don't know if I remember. <laughs> <laughs>